It is very pretty out here. Hi, my name's Flossie Rocks, and I live in this 1999 Ford E350 step van, my tiny home on wheels. Literally where the mountains meet the ocean. I am suited up, ready to go. The paddleboard is inflated. We have fire going, some hot water, boiling, for cooking crabs. Sauce. Oh no. My paddle board has deflated. This board is really old. We were going to go out for another paddle this evening. I guess that's not happening now. Today is my last day. This is the weather we've been waiting for, right on time, because tomorrow evening I'm heading to the ferry. I head back very soon. It has been such an amazing time. I have seen some incredible places. Amanda and I have done some fantastic adventures. It's been really lovely to travel together. And ending at a spot this glorious has just been an extra treat. Um, I have sea urchins in my sink and sitting in cold water, keeping them cool to process this afternoon. And the crab is ready for just to cook tonight. Hopefully we will be able to have one last big fire, which would be really lovely. <sighs> and I'm tired. I'm just going to get my chair and sit down in the sun, take some painkillers because I am on my moon as of today. <sighs> and then later on this evening, we will go out for a little pedal. It's going to be a lovely, lovely day. Decided to finally get in the ocean, Amanda on the paddleboard, and me jumping off to swim, we had reached Little Island. This could mean an exciting and tasty dinner for us. <laughs> That's not actually that big. I've seen bigger. Well, they do, if you think about how water reflects refracts light, everything looks bigger. Uh, would you pull that bag up or get a, organize a bag from that pile, please? Here in British Columbia, sandy bottomed beaches and bays are common. And those bays are often home to the 
lofty, mighty, giant red sea cucumber, which is a Pacific species that ranges from the south coast of Alaska all the way down to Baja, California. They live at depths of up to 250 meters, and while fairly sedentary, they do walk around. While they are basically a mouth at one end and an asshole at the other, they feed on suspended particles, seaweed, etc. They use sticky tentacles to feed on small organism and sediment on the sea floor, much like a starfish putting it into their mouths. It is also preyed upon by the sunflower star and other sea otters and some fish species. Human uses. This species is extensively harvested for commercial consumption and often exported. It is considered a delicacy in some Asian countries. Probably only need one shot like that. Paddling around different areas, I can't help but want to jump in and take a look around. Easier getting off, ain't it? Yeah. I'm real grateful to have a paddleboard, and this is definitely a craft that I find easier to jump on and off as the need and will moves me. Pulling up to an old dock, this giant mooring ball was absolutely fascinating. I wonder what kind of giant ship would have been attached to this at one point. It is such a beautiful bay out here, the forest literally reaching down to touch the ocean. Here, there wasn't a whole ton of sea life. It is an estuary, a bay, but sea cucumbers abounded. One of the, the black ones will be diesel engine chimneys. The silver one is probably a wood stove chimney because it's got a bucket over top of it. Somebody could live on it. It'll be somebody's home. The window's open. Hi, if you're here. I'm a bit worried about that. <laughs> oh, the wind is picked up. As with many bays or ports, where logging or fishing or other ocean related industries have once been there are traces in history antiques relics of old times gone below here an old boiler i think of uh logging probably something that would be used to either haul move or cut logs historically I'm not sure. Take a look and if you can guess, leave a comment below. A swim through. My favorite thing ever. An amazing day with an amazing meal to look forward to. Yeah, this is also edible. 
going, some hot water, boiling, for cooking crabs or set to boil. I have my little mini wok which I'm going to try out for the first time to cook sea cucumber and I'm just going to chill out for sunset. It is very pretty out here, really really gorgeous evening, no rain for the first time in days and we have crab, sea cucumber, rice, and some seaweed and I'm gonna make a uh, peanut butter sweet chili sauce stuff I'm gonna attend to a needy Frank and Frank's gonna get pets very needy today oh I should make you din dins eh? yeah din dins oh. that was a yes put the fire up <laughs> I don't have to bring the pot down it, if you put it low I can't put stuff in the fire so. yeah that's why I didn't No, Frank, my poke stick. Oh, he got so excited. Do you want me to go get you your own stick, Frank? Stop being spitty! Okay. Sauce rice wine vinegar, uh, toasted sesame seed oil. Rags, garlic, healthy amount of chili, molasses because I currently don't have any maple syrup, peanut butter. I need a different spoon for it because that one's dirty. That part of dinner is ready. Now, oh no. My paddleboard has deflated. Oh, look. Oh, man. It's a brand new hole. I have been patching this thing, gluing it back together in so many spots, but this is leaking. And there are a couple more little pinholes along here <sighs> I patched another hole somewhere else this board is really old I bought it secondhand some kind person sold it to me very cheap and I've had a lot of pedals on it I'm very grateful we were going to go out for another paddle this evening. The tide is coming lower. We wanted to go over there to see sea urchins and collect some more, but I guess that's not happening now. We could both go on my board. <laughs> yeah, that is an option. It's a two person board. Yeah. Well, if there's any paddle board, manufacturers out there who would like to sponsor me a brand new paddle board this one is now going to be more glued back together than it is actual paddle board i might keep repairing it because it's the only one i have and at this point in time i don't have the budget for a new one <sighs> well i'm really thankful and i'm really grateful that it didn't pop when it was out there I did not leave it inflated in the sunshine under high pressure. I actually half deflated it to take the pressure off of it before we left it and we were planning to reinflate it again before we went out a second time. But I guess the glue is just failing because it's old. Like I don't even know how old this is because somebody gave it to me and they had stopped using it themselves. So I guess it's a sign. It's a sign that Flossie needs the paddleboard gods to shine upon me and give me a new one. 
I will probably patch it again because at this point in time, that's all the options I've got. To be honest, all of my gear is falling apart. Oh my gosh. The seam on my wetsuit is being glued back together too. Oh my gosh. Yep. All my gear at this point is holding on with a prayer and lots of glue. Wish me luck. But you can't take away from my gratitude for being here in the first place. Now we go get the cram coat. Yep. Oh yeah, we have a rolling boil. Grabbing the pot. Grab the pot. That will be ready in about eight minutes, eight to 11 minutes. You put a timer on? Yeah. Oh, that's hot. Yeah. Do you have a bowl and some food? spoon? Yeah, I guess I'll line the bowl with it. That's what I was thinking. Two sheets. Sea cucumber calamari. Oh, did you heat the rice up? Yeah. Just a little bit. Looking good. Oh, yeah. A <laughs> couple days apart. texture. Mm -hmm. You like? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm very relieved. Honestly, I'd rather have, I prefer this like kind of chewy texture over like too soft or like, I don't know. No, oh, slimy and soft is yeah, gross. Okay. Because this was our second time Eat, or a second time eating it, uh, first time trying it without being breaded. I've had it multiple times with other people who've cooked it breaded. What do you think? I think with garlic and lime. Oh yeah. You sauteed like this, or instead of panko, tempura and put garlic in the batter. Yes. And then put lime over. Yeah. Tempura strips. That would be really freaking mm -hmm. good. Yeah. I think also like. When we take it off the skin in one big lot, cutting it into smaller pieces, mm -hmm. because it looks like big rolls of pasta when we eat it, but I think yeah, it'll it'll be more flavorful. I'd be interested to see it in a better pan or in, in a hotter pan because I mm. made it in a sauce rather than like frying it till it got crispy. But yeah, then we have our sushi rolls left. It's kind of great. Anyway. <coughs> what? I was hiding other sounds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for calling attention to that. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't want to ruin your audio with a fart if you took the crap. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want you to get crabby with me. <laughs> I said I'm gonna choke on my food from laughing. <laughs> In the process of making crab, how many times do you fish them out of the water? <laughs> like at least three times. Well. One side of the ocean. Oh yeah. One side of the water they're soaking in, and one side of the water you cook them in. <laughs> yeah, this is true. The and final, maybe, the maybe. final water you don't fish them out of. No, I mean really. <laughs> Whoa, come on, Amanda. Gross. Really, you fish them out multiple times because I wash them and mm -hmm. clean them in and out of the water a lot. I'm just here making all the gross body noises and jokes. <laughs> oh, 
I'm still sick. No, you're not. It's sea sniffles. It's sea sniffles. I can like I like the name of that. Yeah. They're just sea sniffles. Oh my gosh. Everything looks so pretty right now. The diving drip. The diving drip. The cold air sniffle. Sitting here eating our crab, and Frank just are freaking out and barking. The wind is coming at us. Oh, such a beautiful evening, though. Mm -hmm. Franklin! When he yells at something, I yell at him extra loud just to back him up mostly. <laughs> you know, so that whatever's there hears both of us. Yeah. No. With a full heart, with a full belly, with a camera and memory cards full of amazing, amazing times. This was the last sunset I was spending with Amanda. Our time together was drawing to a close and I would start to head back to Vancouver Island, taking a couple of ferries. This beautiful night sky hues felt like a blessing, a gift, a goodbye to a place that has left in a massive impression upon me. And I do truly believe that nobody can come here without being changed and coming back different in some way. Oh good. Yep, yeah, he is. You've been a good boy keeping out of watch for bears. Okay, so update. Today is my last day. Tonight I catch the ferry from here to Prince Rupert. Tonight slash tomorrow morning, <laughs> midnight. Um, and then from there I continue down to Vancouver Island. I cannot believe that this trip has been real. I think part of me has been focusing on keeping up and documenting everything and spending time with Amanda and taking everything in that I haven't had a whole ton of slow moments to like pinch myself and be like yeah this is real it's been a very full very fast month and I feel very grateful that this has been my life. I'm watching the ocean and the birds play and the splashing of creatures, diving in and out. I hope you can hear a little bit of the sound of the waves. This to me feels like the gateway I wanna come back to. We went to St. Mary's Well, the spring, and they say whoever drinks of this spring will come back again. And I feel like that power is coming 
and the longer I'm here after having had a drink from there, the more I want to come back here and paddle that way. Um, it has been really interesting being here. It is. I have actually barely spoken to anybody else. I've spoken to some service station people, some gas station people, a couple of other cafe, a, a cafe and a store, and that's it literally the only other person I've spoken to for the most of the time I've been here is Amanda like we've barely seen humans and on purpose we've stayed away from main town areas and stayed more on the coast or by the lake yeah it's been really incredible I'm watching an eagle fly across the mountains and the other day we saw a bear on the foreshore over there and I got some footage of it and I feel like deeply grateful for that nature experience and connection to land and yeah it's a different kind of land most of this place is low-lying swamp marshlands then you come here and then there's mountains with snow on it and the north of the island is so different from the mid and I've not even yet seen all of the other islands that make up the rest of this place. I hope that one day I get to come back and do that. Uh, I don't think it will be my van because we are almost as far south as you can get by a vehicle. The rest of the way to go you have to go by boat. Maybe one day I'll have a boat that I can also work from, have power, live aboard. I don't know. I have no idea. But that would be my dream, to come back here and spend equally as much time, if not more, boating around the island. Because there's so much more here to see. And I think this keeps coming back to a constant theme of everywhere I go there is more to see. And I feel like I only tiny scratch the surface of my curiosity, my knowing of a place, the culture, its people. Went to the uh, Haragwai Heritage Center and it was incredible. And it was beautiful to finally see history told from the perspective of not the colonizer and not the invader or not the settler. That was really impactful and beautiful. Um, I wish more cultural identities were explained from the perspective of those who have lived that way for thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of years. I got to go for many dives here, eat more seafood than I had harvested myself, and try new recipes. I got to int introduce Amanda to some things that I find delicious um, and we both love crabs so it's lovely to do that a couple of times. Yeah. The wind is picking up, I hope the audio on this is not too terrible. I'm feeling incredibly grateful. On the job front I have had a couple of interviews and another one booked for next week. So wish me luck. I have no news yet. I'm still doing my current existing temporary contract, so I have that at least, but we shall see. Who knows what life will hold. You summoned me? <coughs> Woo! Wow. That's the before. And this is the after.
thank you so much as always for being here for your support for your encouragement for your kind words and i hope to see you all soon bye thanks so much for joining me on this wonderful episode a big thank you to my patreons for all their support your kind donations your comments everybody here a big thank you to all of those who have subscribed like this video and commenting every week i enjoy your feedback and the community that we all bring together and i'll see you for an exciting one next week bye